Was Princess Diana's death simply an accident or was it one of the greatest cover-ups by the royal family? Diana Spencer was born on 1st of July 1961 in Norfolk. In 1975, she received the title Lady Diana Spencer due to her father inheriting his earldom. She went to boarding school in Kent and finished her studies in Switzerland. She moved to London and worked as a kindergarten teacher at Young Inland School in Pimlico. Prince Charles had been sporadically dating Diana's sister, Lady Sarah. On one weekend, she had invited Charles to her family home, which is where 29-year-old Prince Charles and 16-year-old Diana met. Four years later, in 1981, the same year Diana turned 20, she married Prince Charles at St. Paul's Cathedral. Soon after, Diana gave birth to Prince William, and two years later, she gave birth to Prince Harry. In December 1992, Charles and Diana had decided to separate, and in November 1995, Princess Diana had given an interview where she told the public how unhappy she was in her personal life and with the pressure of her royal role. She told the BBC that nobody ever told her well done for all the good she was doing, but quote, if I tripped up, which invariably I did because I was new at the game, a ton of bricks came down on me. Diana struggled to change from her normal life to the royal ways. She spent a lot of time alone and bored, and soon after moving into Buckingham Palace, she began to struggle with bulimia. Charles didn't pay much attention to his new wife, and Diana claimed her eating disorder started when Charles held her by the waist and said, quote, a bit chubby here, aren't we? Then when asked in an interview whether he was in love with Diana, he famously said, quote, whatever in love means. During this time, Charles was having an affair with Camilla Parker. The royal family didn't approve of Camilla as a wife, and so they kept dating in secret. Princess Diana was not having a great marriage. She was depressed and at one point had tried to kill herself. By 28th of August, 1996, Charles and Diana were divorced. So he fumbled the bag, but he also was just cheating mm. on Diana, or, or, or cheating on Diana with Camilla. I mean, you'd like to think if you're gonna if you're gonna cheat on someone, you gotta level it up. But it it was tough to beat. Was Princess he Diana. cheating, or was it like they were like mutually apart? Like they agreed to like they weren't divorced at this time, but they were apart. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what was going on nah, there? Nah, nah. I think he, I think he was, I think he he had a mistress. Oh, scumbag, scumbag. Yeah. No, I'm related to Princess Diana as well, so I feel. Are you still hard. really believing the fact that your grandmother 100%. once told you that you were related it, to the Spencer no, family? I, um, um, check my family tree. I'm in there, man. Spencer's. At the time where Diana was recently divorced and 36 years old, Prince William was 15 and Prince Harry was 12, Diana had recently been on holiday with both princes in Central Pay and afterwards flew to Paris on holiday with Dodi Al Fayyad, the son of wealthy businessmen who owned the Harrods department store, Mohammed Al Fayyad. She had met Dodi at a polo match when she still married to Charles in 1986. Apparently, Diana and Dodi were in a new relationship. About a month prior to the accident, Dodi was engaged to Kelly Fisher in July 1997. However, a couple who had eaten at the hotel's restaurant the same night as Diana and Dodi at the Ritz told People magazine, quote, they looked like two love-struck teenagers. There were about 30 paparazzi photographers waiting outside the Ritz and the couple decided to use free decoy cars to try to leave the hotel without being followed. Despite the decoys, the car which contained Diana, her boyfriend Dodi Fayad, and their bodyguard Trevor Rhys Jones was being hounded and chased by paparazzi. Trevor was sitting in the front passenger seat, whereas Diana and Dodi were in the back. Her driver, Henry Paul, who was also the deputy head of security at the Hotel Ritz Paris, was later found to have been drunk and speeding at about twice the limit. Once the car entered the tunnel in Paris, the car crashed into the wall and then a pillar. It flipped over and stopped right in front of oncoming traffic. All this happened while still in the tunnel. Dodi and Henry were killed instantly, but Diana died while she was being transported to the hospital. She had suffered a concussion, broken arm and a cut to her thigh, but her cause of death was severe chest wounds which caused internal bleeding. She was taken to the hospital where medics tried to keep her alive, but her death was announced at 4.53am on August 31st. The bodyguard, Trevor, survived. 
with serious injuries. According to a firefighter, her last words were apparently, quote, my God, what has happened? Now we're some low level celebrity in the grand scheme of things. Could you imagine walking out of a door and about a hundred people there waiting with the brightest flashes ever. Surely this has caused seizures before. Yeah, that would be a bit stressful, I won't even lie. Also, the son of Harrods department store, like, this is Bro. just different money, different yeah. gravy. Like, it, it breaded to yeah, the max. Just casually, like, oh yeah. What's Could you ever imagine, here? this might sound weird, right? Someone with that sort of wealth just really dating, like, a very, like, I don't know. I mean, Somebody probably, ha yeah, it probably a, happens. A probably happens. Anyway, look, this accident that took place, do you think if you were driving a car and loads of flashes were going off in front of you, do you think that's enough for you to crash the vehicle? Yeah, probably. Like, it, it depends how strong a flash are we talking here. Right, I feel like the flash back in the day was always stronger. I'm sorry, but when you watch like movies and stuff, for some reason the paparazzi's flash is just so yeah. much more Yeah, and relentless. it was at night time, right? So, yeah, it, you know, the point. flash was needed. I and mean, it, it's it's very much possible. It is possible. I've done my, uh, my work and I've come to that conclusion. Thank you, Detective Chip. Pretty sure everyone came to that conclusion. No, but I, I was there first. Now, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you don't know what BetterHelp is, we've actually worked with them a few times now. They're here to give you some therapy. Now, honestly, getting things off your chest, being able to have someone that you can speak to so easily and accessibly as well. This is online. You can go sign up and then speak to a therapist that way. It's all very quick and easy. And that's probably the most important thing. In my head, I always thought, oh, if I need to speak to someone, you've got to go find someone and then go see them in person and then it just becomes a big thing in actual fact you can just do this on your computer which is really really good it's also a much more affordable way of doing it a big thing that a lot of people have is that therapy can be a really expensive thing and it can but there are other solutions and one of those is better help so if this does sound of interest to you guys then you can check out betterhelp.com forward slash fellas mysteries that's betterhelp.com forward slash fellas mysteries and you get 10 percent off of your first month thank us later boom the public was distraught by diana's death she was known as the people's princess and many people queued up on the streets to leave her flowers and cards the royal family mourned in private at first in balmoral before her funeral on september 6 1997 as they wanted to give prince william and prince harry some breathing space diana was beloved by the public due to how she used her fame for good and kindness by one point she was linked to more than 100 different charities the Met Police decided to launch Operation Paget to figure out whether it was an accident or whether Diana was murdered. Apparently, they had 175 theories which they were interested in. You can imagine someone that was loved by quite literally the entire nation and beyond, right? Because if you ask your parents or just anyone of that generation what their thoughts on Princess Diana was, you'd struggle to really find someone that had a bad word to say yeah, about her. Yeah, they all like, worshipped her, they all loved her. Yeah. She was like the sweetheart. She was, she was the nation's sweetheart, exactly. What interests me is that instantly, off the bat, there was an operation, Operation Paget, mm. right? Probably mispronouncing that, but we're gonna work with that. Paget, Paget, whatever it is. It yes. was an operation launched and they had 175 theories. That's now, a lot. look, me and you, Chip, as the best detectives in the country, we probably would have struggled to come up with 175 different theories. Yeah, we would have just come up with one extremely strong one, which in, turned out to be completely it. true. Yeah, and so that's exactly it. So they should have had us around back then. But the fact that they managed to have 175 different theories, surely people thought something was up. Yeah. That this wasn't just a paparazzi accident. Not only that, but do you not think these type of accidents would have happened before? Paparazzi don't just follow Princess Diana, right? They, yeah, fo they follow, they follow all the big celebrities. But it's the first time for everything. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. There's something just about, I, I don't know. But it if doesn't I was help being blinded that, yeah. by something, I think I would just put the car to a stop. Well, it doesn't help that the driver was apparently extremely Waved. quite drunk. So yeah. that in a combination of paparazzi true. flashes and stuff. It's a recipe for disaster. Exactly. Isn't it? And they're in a tunnel. Now onto the part that I'm excited about, we get to talk about some of the theories surrounding Diana's death. Mm. Mohammed Al Fayed claimed the royal family wanted to kill the couple as Diana was pregnant with Dodi's child. They were close to announcing the news publicly as well as their engagement. 
Mohammed said that the royal family, especially Prince Philip, could not accept that an Egyptian Muslim could eventually be the stepfather of the future King of England. And so, he told the British Royal Courts of Justice that the MI6 and the establishment together killed the couple. However, there was no evidence of any pregnancy in Diana's post-mortem. Witnesses also came forward to confirm that she was using contraception and still had a regular menstrual cycle. Although it was true that Dodie bought a ring, it is not known whether he had asked Diana yet. Plus, Diana had previously dated and was close to an engagement with another Muslim man, a heart surgeon in London, and the royal family didn't do anything to stop it. And Prince Charles even gave his blessing. CCTV shows that Dodie had left the jewelers with just a catalogue, but Mohammed claimed that the ring had to be altered to Diana's fingers, and they chose the ring in Monte Carlo, but they picked it up after its alteration the day before they died. However, the shop assistant of the jewelers and the CCTV footage contradicted his statement. There was a messy debate, but eventually it was claimed that Mohammed bought the ring after they died. Mohammed claimed that the couple were to announce their engagement on the Monday after the crash, on the 1st of September 1997. However, when Operation Paget looked into this theory, they realized that the news of this engagement would cause a media spectacle, and the whole world would have been interested. So they must have planned in advance and prepared for the wave of news publications. However, there was no evidence of any planning. Also, Diana had called her journalist friends a couple of hours before the crash, asking about what would appear on a Sunday newspaper about her that week and gave no indication of any big news or announcements to come. Mohammed also claimed that Diana was pregnant for the first time in May 2001, which was considered strange as that would have been three and a half years after the accident. Why was he sitting on such important information? So this theory, right? There's too much that contradicts it, first of all, okay? So obviously, Mohammed Al-Fayed really felt as though this was done by the establishment. The MI6 and the royal family have set out to kill Diana because... And now, this part, by the way, I think is probably a little bit more realistic is the fact that the royal family wouldn't want an Egyptian Muslim yep. to be the stepfather um, of the future King of England. That to me, I can completely see because let's let's be 100% honest here, right? Whether you love the royal family or not, it's not the most diverse group. No. And we've seen what happens when they tend to diversify, right? Is, uh, yeah, the royal family don't look too fondly upon it. So it doesn't surprise me that they didn't approve of this relationship mm -hmm. here. Would they go as far to kill Princess Diana? One she was loved own. by the world, Chip. Do you think they would do it? And like, it's so risky as well, because what if something goes wrong and, it, and it's clear cut evidence that they did it, then they are finished. Yeah, it would be the worst thing ever. Now, was she pregnant when this happened? That's what Mohammed Al-Fayed, Dodi's father, reckoned. But the post-mortem, all of this stuff came out and so said that otherwise. she just wasn't. He, but, they, he, but maybe the post-mortem has been doctored. Yeah, well, yeah. no, but that's the thing. This sort of stuff, when we're talking about this sort of high-level thing, that's probably a relatively easy thing to doctor. Yeah, 100%. You get a little shady guy in, and he says, oh, I didn't see anything in the post-mortem. And, and, he, and he's found an extra million quid in his bank account by accident. Yeah. Things happen, man. Things do happen. I'm that not saying sense. that is what happened, but people do say um, that these things do happen. Um, also, uh, unfortunately for Mohammed Al-Fayed, everything that he sort of said was, was kind of contradicted, uh, not only by the um, jeweler, like, uh, the assistant, the, per the, sh the shopkeeper person working there, she said that that wasn't the case. And then also the CCTV as well, um, that shows him just leaving with a catalogue. But he said, right, but it, they, they had to make some changes to the ring, all that sort of thing. Okay, maybe, but the shopkeeper would have said something like that, That's don't you true. think? Yeah. Also, the main sticking point for me here, and I don't know whether this was out of fear or maybe he just wasn't sure and he needed confirmation, but why come out with this three and a half years later? It's a bit late, isn't it? Yeah, surely this is something you would come out with off the bat. Maybe felt threatened, but he is a rich and powerful man as well. Yeah, I just think there's too much stuff that goes against what Mohammed Al Fayed said here for me to believe it, but I just don't see like why would he lie? But maybe he just wants just like he just feels like he's he needs trying, closure. Yeah. He needs a reason. Maybe he just can't accept, you know, that he his son died in a in an a accidental freak accident. Like, accidental freak accident. Yeah, yeah. And he just needs something like he he's trying his best to pin it on the royal family, anything yeah. like that. It's true. Right. Let's move on to the next theory. It was said that the driver, Henry Paul, was working for the MI6, and he was part of the conspiracy to murder Diana. 
A former MI6 agent, Richard Tomlinson, testified and claimed Henry was part of the MI6, which also explained the weird funds which were found in Henry's bank account. He was on a salary of £35,000, but had about £250,000 in his bank account. Sleuths believed that the police had swapped out Henry's body for another drunk person in order to give the crash some reasonable cover. However, on the night of the crash, Diana and Dodie kept changing their plans, and Henry wasn't even supposed to be working that night, so any premeditated plans would have been ruined. By the end of the investigation, it was found that Henry was a low-level informant for the French Secret Service, but nothing serious. And to rebuttal the claims of the sleuths about the fake body, DNA samples confirmed that the blood taken from Henry was his, as it was compared to blood samples provided by Paul's parents. Another point to note was that although he was said to be three times the French legal limit, he appeared very sober on the CCTV at the Ritz on that evening. Doctors claim, however, that alcoholics and those with higher tolerance for alcohol may appear more sober than they are. The driver, Chip. Tell me we're on to something with this driver. He was over the Attention, limit. Sir. He was. He was drunk. He was three times over the limit. Although on the CCTV, he looked completely fine. But I'm sorry. If you are either an alcoholic or even even myself, right? I feel like I can turn... If I need to act sober... It can be done. It can be done. There's plenty of times I've needed to pull that one out when you're trying to get into a club or whatever. You can look sober. So the, the whole thing of him looking sober on CCTV, I don't, that doesn't buy. I don't think you can really tell if someone is actually drunk. Um, I mean, those are the obvious cases. We've all been there. But for the most part, I think you can absolutely be smashed and completely appear sober mm. on a camera. Yep, it's true. I mean, it was a... Uh... Was he a big block? It, it would have definitely been because it depends on your alcohol tolerance too. So you can have yeah, loads even, of alcohol even in if your you, system. Even if you're not a big block, you, yeah. uh, you can handle a good fair few. I pets. mean, you're looking at him right here, man. Also, the other part of this, now this part seems a bit movie-like to me, right, is the fact that they switched bodies. Mm, I feel like that's too difficult to do. It's paparazzi in a tunnel. Yeah, that, the whole point was that there was pictures and everything being flashed and taken. Paparazzi yeah. taking their photos. And what, they just stopped to let them swap the body? Am I six? Oh, go ahead, do that. Swap that body. We'll wait. Yeah. yeah it's not, uh, that I, can't be true. Something like this so high profile, I just, I can't imagine them just wheeling out a different body and replacing it with, you know what I mean? Yeah, unless he jumped out of the car okay, as it I was know moving. When... And then oh, he ran into like a side tunnel, like oh, a side door God. in a You've tunnel. You've watched way too many movies, mate. Mission Impossible style. I don't really like this theory that much. Also, the bit bringing up about the money, who knows, where, like, okay, can we investigate where that money came from a little bit more? Because it, just because um, he was on a salary of $35,000 and had 250k in the bank, you have inheritance. There's lots of other ways that you can have like a exactly, windfall of cash. Exactly, exactly. He so, might have helped out. I got an email recently from the Prince of Zimbabwe. Yeah. I'm helping him out. So, yeah. And I'm getting paid 500k for it. So, there you go. He, he, he might have just replied to that email. Unlike all of us mugs who Love, just yeah. completely aired it. And, exactly. in fact, I flagged it as spam. I'm an idiot. Idiot. So, there. Right. Do you think it's a driver chip? No. I, don't, I was in. I don't think the driver was in on some grand scheme. But he was just drunk. Is this just a genuine case of all these conspiracy theories, but the driver was just drunk and crashed? It was just drunk driving and crashed, I actually yeah. genuinely could be could that. Could you imagine as well, you're drunk, you've got loads of blinding flashes. It's, it's not a great recipe. Hella sauce, yeah. There were claims that the car was surrounded by bright flashes before and after they entered the tunnel. Similarly, there was a white Fiat which had followed them into the tunnel and left some forensic evidence on the Mercedes before driving away. People believe that this car was driven by MI6 agents who tried to blind Henry, making him lose control of the car. But these flashes may have been caused by the paparazzi that were chasing them. The absence of CCTV videos has also been noted as strange. According to The Independent, there were more than 14 CCTV cameras in the underpass, but no videos were recorded. This has also led to many sleuths to argue that this is the work of the establishment. However, in Chapter 5 of the Operation Paget report, they address why there was no CCTV footage made. Although there are lots of cameras on the route, many cameras faced the entrance to buildings, and some of the cameras had no need to work that late at night. Similarly, the police were searching for the Fiat and its owner with a view to prosecute the driver for not stopping and helping the car crash. The French police eliminated over 5,000 white Fiat Unos from their inquiry. Mohammed claimed that the car belonged to a French photojournalist called Jean-Paul Andanson, but his Fiat was found in an unroadworthy condition and he had sold the car in October 1997. After looking into him, the police dismissed him as the driver. 
In May 2000, Jean-Paul committed suicide and Mohammed claimed that it was either the guilt or the French or British security services killed him. Another noteworthy theory is that Diana was known to have always worn a seatbelt. In every paparazzi photo and everyone who knew her claimed that she was a religious seatbelt user. But on the night, neither Diana nor Dodie wore a seatbelt. Some claim this could be because the seatbelts failed and weren't working due to a premeditated sabotage and so didn't wear the belts as they kept hiding. It is believed that if she had been wearing a seatbelt, she would have survived. The same former MI6 agent who claimed Henry worked for the MI6 swore the MI6 was involved. He later on served five months in prison for breaching the Official Secrets Act 1999. He said Diana was killed in a similar way to how they were planning to kill the President of Serbia in 1992 by using strobe lights to blind his driver. Later on, in 2008, he said that after 16 or 17 years, he couldn't remember exactly what he saw in the document, whether it was a proposal to use strobe lights or not, but confirmed that this method was used as a part of a training for MI6 agents. By the end, the inquiry dismissed his claims and blamed the rise of conspiracy theories on her death on Richard. The MI6 and them being involved. Again, this pops up and I mean, this is this is pretty lengthy. There's quite a few things that really make it seem very conspiracy theory. Like the first mm. thing for me instantly, I never like it when there's no CCTV footage, especially when there were loads of cameras there. They supposedly were just not looking in the right way or they were turned off because of the time of the day. I'm sorry, Chip, but if you've got CCTV cameras, surely they're just rolling all yeah, the time. There's, yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. That's something that is super sus. Yeah. I reckon they've come in, deleted the footage. Or, or someone's got in there and made sure the cameras were turned off beforehand. Yep. Some, it's something very strange here. Or maybe they just never wanted any footage of a princess's death to ever Being get released. There. Yeah, that's true. There could be maybe a bit more of like an innocent side to this, but then also would they not just come out and say that? Like, oh, I, actually maybe, I, I don't think so because that would make them look more suspicious, right? I don't know. Either way, very, very interesting that there were 14 cameras and yet nothing caught, caught anything. Mm. Yeah, not a big fan of that. But we then move on to the Fiat owner. Oh, yeah. This that we is, spoke this about. is a bit dodgy, isn't it? Uh, look, for me, there is something that is always suspicious about people that are involved in big events like this they that happen to die. commit suicide. Always. Why is it always suicide, always. Chip? Always. Well, the father, Mohammed, he said it was either the guilt or he was killed sense. off. Yeah. So this for me... Yeah. Just convenient, isn't it? But I mean, it genuinely could be a case of stress and guilt because I imagine he was getting hammered a bit. Yeah. Because oh, hey, uh, they were, bit, they were trying to track him down to charge him for not actually stopping and helping the accident, right? The person yeah. who owned this Fiat. But again, the Fiat was sold and unroadworthy. So how was this Fiat there? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it could have just been like this guy just didn't have his shit together and just Driving completely a shat himself. Yeah. When, when when it happened, he realized he was going to be in a lot more trouble than, you than know, you probably think you can get done for loads more. Yeah. Than, you know, than just- You'd be in jail for life. You could probably go for jail for life if they really wanted you to. Yeah, it, yeah, it's actually, yeah, fair point. Another part of this was the seatbelt situation. She, Both seatbelts just conveniently not working, by the way. Well, well, no, they, they, they're saying it, they might have not been working. The, the point is that they weren't wearing them when yeah, Diana always she is, wears them. She's notoriously known to wear seatbelts. But mm. they're hiding. They're trying to hide from the paparazzi. Can you imagine you're on the seat and you're doing like this and you, you're maybe caught up, maybe had yeah. a few drinks. It wouldn't surprise me that someone's not wearing one. I think it is a bit of a reach to say that like, like you know, they've been tampered with and they didn't do it. Because I just feel like there's a much easier ways to kill someone off and the bodyguard was survived as well, didn't he? But was his yes. seatbelt working or was it every seatbelt in the car? That's a good point, actually. I mean, I imagine his seatbelt was working because he did survive in the end. But, uh, but you'd, anyway, you'd only want to go for the back ones because Princess Diana they is always going to sit in the back no matter what. Yeah, she ain't riding shotgun. No, she don't ride shotgun. No, I, I think that for me is a bit more of a reach, I guess. Um, but this MI6 um, agent that came out and said that MI6 definitely had something to do or was involved in her death. And it was all about this blinding. Yes, uh, strobe theory. lights. Yeah. Using strobe lights to cause a distraction for the driver. Interesting, I think that would actually definitely put someone off, especially if they're drunk. 
Yeah. You could easily be, because if the strobe lights are very strong and if it's flashing and you actually can't see the road, yeah, you're going to whack it into the side of the wall or yeah. a pillar. Absolutely. The fact that this is already a thing, maybe they, they went, okay, we're not going to use it here, but they always had this method like in yeah. store for something and they've decided to use it on this. It's perfect as well because it, the method is covered up by the paparazzi photo flash, flash photography. Yeah. So any idea of, oh, strobe lights, nah, it was just a camera, mate. Yeah. It's true, it's true, there's a lot here. I just think, so the, my biggest thing here is because I actually, for me, overall, I don't believe that there really is much conspiracy here because the, the reason why, I just think if you wanted to kill someone, you wanted to get rid of someone. I feel like there's a better way to do it. Yeah, there's a much easier, cleaner way of, of killing someone uh, or, or, or having them killed. And I just think you are relying on so many variables here when you're talking, so you're hoping someone dies in a car crash, right, okay, so what if the driver didn't hit it at the right angle or she didn't die, she was just involved, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. to, to ensure 100% death, I just don't know if this, this is how you do it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But let's go on to uh, the, the final theory here and something that might change our minds. When the Met had opened an inquiry into Princess Diana's death, they interviewed Prince Charles as they had found a note written by Diana in 1995, which read that somebody is planning an accident in my car, brake failure and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for Charles to marry. Diana had given this note 10 months before her death to her former butler. Prince Charles had participated fully and nothing was found from the investigation. This letter is definitely suspicious. Uh, I, I think it is, it is very strange that it was so specific about that car accident. What do you think about it, Chip? Do you think that this is something that people should take a bit more yeah, seriously? Yeah, I mean, or? It is, well, she's describing her future death in the letter. Like, it's kind of kind of crazy. She says, like, brake failure, which it wasn't. It was a crash, serious head injury. But I mean, do you know, you know what's crazy, though? Could, could, it, could there have been brake failure? Can't wrap my head. Yep, you know what, potentially, but I feel like if that was the case, we would know. We would know because you could check the car, right? Yeah, and check for that for would be like a known thing. Okay. Even still, though, like she says, an accident in my car, so she does know of something. Either that, or she's so paranoid beyond belief. Yeah. But it's convenient that this, and they wouldn't want that. Whoever planned this wouldn't want that to line up with this note because now it makes it even more suspicious. Yeah, yeah, that's hmm. very true. I don't know whether she got tipped off by someone on the inside. Yeah. And, you know, that there's there's probably Man. loads of stuff here because like I said, you know, a lot of people would have wanted Diana to stay alive and a lot of people willing to to tip her off if she felt mm, that. But what's she like gonna do now. about that? She has to get in a car. So yeah. and, and it's happened ten months later, so maybe they knew she knew. A, yeah, or, or they thought ten months is enough of a time for her to like maybe let her guard down a little bit yeah. more or uh, I don't know, I think it's a bit unfortunate because there's really not else. I not feel much like else they to it. they should have gone yeah, they gotta investigate that to the Max, man, there's something going on there, right? I mean, they did interview Prince Charles, but hey, at the end it says that nothing was found from the investigation, that so could that's just what be, we're with. That could easily be buried. Yeah, for know? sure. Now, I'll give you guys just a, a quick update on what's going on. Uh, Mohammed, Dodi's dad, uh, had hired a former, a former senior detective at Scotland Yard to look into the death. And from his investigation, he found no evidence of any criminal conspiracy. He concluded that she was not pregnant or engaged at the time of her death, which obviously goes against, again, what Mohammed had said in the first yeah. theory we spoke about. Seven years after Diana's death in 2005, Prince Charles ended up marrying Camilla, now uh, who goes uh, by the name Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall. But yeah, overall, Chip, what do you think about these theories? Where, it's wh so, where are you it's resting? It's so hard to call because if it, if it was like some massive cover up, it's a good one. It is a good one. But I just can't help but like think that maybe we're just looking too much into it and she just did die in a car accident. In, in a drunk driver scenario, Maybe I don't she know. just did, you know. The conspiracy theories, I guess it's fun, if that's the word you want to use, probably not the word to use, but, but no, I'm just not feeling it. Me neither. I'm there's not there's, there's nothing here that grabs me by the balls, put it that way. Look guys, <laughs> yeah. thank you very much for tuning in to this Fellas Mysteries. Chip, what do they got to do? Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Spotify, and rate the podcast five stars, and we will see you all next Monday, 6 p.m. for a brand new case. Yeehaw!